Y'all seem to love the last time we did this. So today, we are once again going to be rebuilding a team of busts. And we're gonna do it a little different this time. And I'll explain exactly what we're gonna do in a second. But we are gonna see how many players' careers we can save here. But we are gonna see how many players' careers we can save here. With the power of Madden. And the reason we are doing this once again is because we, uh, we hit the light goal of 1200 by just a little bit. You know just over double uh maybe that was a little low so if we can hit how crazy do i want to go if we can hit 3,000 likes on this video which is the biggest like goal i've ever had i have a crazy rebuild idea planned that may or may not involve going back in time maybe a little hint there that could feature a lot of these players so if and only if we hit 3,000 likes on this video it'll let me know that y'all want to see that and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already all i do are mad and rebuilds so if you like rebuilds you're definitely in the right place trying to hit 50k by the end of february and you know it'll make you an og of the channel while you still can be one for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers i'm sure and no shout out for this video but if you want a shout out if you care about that let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below or if you don't want one still i want to know what y'all want to see but enough yapping let's get into the rebuild and let's go over the team for a for a second so if you saw the last one of these i took some players off the team now now, I left Trayvon Walker here because uh, I knew that would uh, upset some people and I thought that would be kind of funny. I absolutely despised that pick and I think he had like 10 sacks this year in real life. How he got a lot of those sacks, I'm gonna get murdered. I, sh I shouldn't be talking about this. It was it was a little bit Mickey Mouse. They were almost all unblocked. So I, I took him off. I'm not, I don't actually think he's a bust. He could become amazing and he was decent this last year. I, I just wanted to make people mad. I took Sammy Watkins off, which I'm very very surprised people were so adamant that he wasn't a bust. If he was an end of the first round pick, sure, but he was like the number six pick I, or higher. I don't remember what pick he was. But anyways, the rest of this team is definitely saveable, especially players like Kadarius Tony, who still has star dev for some reason. I liked him a lot as a prospect. Has been more of a, I guess, mental issue in the NFL. I don't know. Zach Wilson was also surprisingly controversial. I, <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. He definitely can work out. But we have some fun players here like Kevin White. Should I try to develop Jalen Rager? I might. Him, Nikhil Harry, and Kadarius Tony is gonna be our receiving core. We have Eli Apple, Artie Burns at corner, <laughs> LJ Collier, oh god, Devin Bush. Derek Barnett has been decent as of late. Between when I made this last video and now, I mean, I, I don't think that frees him from being a bust, especially for the Eagles, but we'll get rid of him. I want to start Tack McKinley because I don't really feel like he was given a enough of a chance. I thought he was pretty underrated. Oh yeah, and Leonard Fournette is our running back. I wouldn't call him a 100% bust, but there just aren't many first round running backs that definitely didn't work out. So he's like the closest thing I can find to a bust because he only had like 1,000 yard season and he only had like, no, he had two, but like if you're taking a running back top five, they better be insane for a long time. He was only with the Jags for three years. But how we are going to do this rebuild is to simulate what these teams did in real life, which is not get first round talent. I'm going to say we cannot spend first round picks because I don't want to not draft, but we are going to say we just can't draft in the first round. I could try to pick busts, but that would be hard to know for sure who is a bust, I guess. And for free agency, if there is a player 75 overall or lower that was a first round pick, I'm going to say I can sign them unless they regress down to a 75. I don't know. We'll, we'll see when we get there, but let's get to the midseason point and I am curious to see how this team does I don't remember how it did in the last one could do well could have no wins at all we'll see oh yeah and I guess I should say this because we started Zach Wilson in the last one I think we're gonna go with Trey Lance I've seen him do very well in simulation before his hair spazzing out so we'll see what he can do also I realized I left some Jaguars linemen Tyler Shatley and a couple others I, I didn't mean to call them busts they were just here okay well we are one in six at the midseason. That's, that's tough. What? It looks like we have a good offense, or at least serviceable, but we only have 10 points per game. But we're 12th for pass yards per game, and 19th for rush yards per game, which aren't great, but they're not 32nd, so we just can't score, I guess? Our red zone percentage also isn't the worst in the... What is happening with our offense? How are we not scoring points? Oh no, that's third down per... I'm stupid. Whatever. But yeah, our, our defense is terrible, which is fair, but this 
team definitely should get better in the near future. But I guess we have players to re-sign. Kalevon Chason, I mean, I don't think he's going to get any playing time, but yeah, and then that's about it. So let's get to the end of the year, and we will see what kind of record we finish with, but at least we have a win. It could be worse. Okay, well, we finished at 4 and 13. Understandable. We had a, we had a good pass D. Our stats look nothing like how they looked at the midseason. Was I looking at the wrong team? I don't know, but at least we got more than one win. Now, let's see if any of our players had a good season. Okay, Trey Lance was not great. 3,000 yards, 23 touchdowns, 22 interceptions. Doing his best Jameis Winston impression. Ooh, Leonard Fournette was actually pretty good. 1,100 yards, 4.5 per carry, 5 touchdowns. I mean, if he can keep that up, he could be pretty good here. I mean, he'll probably regress after the year, but hopefully not too much. Nikhil Harry was our leading receiver with almost a 1,000 yards and 7 touchdowns. Kadarius Tony, 700 yards. Not much outside of him, though. The blocking was better than some of my good overall offensive lines. Thanks, EA. Just want to point out that Tristan Wirfs allowed 14 sacks one season in my last rebuild, so that's fun. Devin Bush led the team with 145 tackles. I was trying to make Isaiah Simmons the number one, so he could maybe make or get superstar dev, but he still had a pretty good year overall, stats-wise at least. Jerry Tillery led the team with 15 tackles for loss, 14 for Furl, 10 for McKinley and Turner, and sacks a whole four for Tack McKinley. And then that's about it. And interceptions, we had two for Isaiah Simmons, and that is all. Oh boy, this defense is gonna be fun to fix. But let's check out yearly awards. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. Big surprise there. Trevor Lawrence got signed by the Colts, apparently. Isaiah Pacheco wins Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Von Miller. And then we're not gonna have any rookies, so no awards at all. Nobody even up there. That's tough. Leonard Fournette didn't even make the list for best running back. Am I checking the right conference? Yeah, the Jags are AFC, obviously. Uh, unlucky. But let's get into the offseason, and this is where the work begins. Can we save this team? But wow, big shocker there. The Cowboys win the Super Bowl. They beat the Bengals 28-17. to Of course, when I use the Cowboys, they don't do very well, but here, of course. Should we re-sign Josh Rosen just for fun? The Rosen one. I guess so. Three years, five mil. I didn't even, I just clicked through it. Okay, he took it. But let's see if there are any free agents we can sign. I have no idea if there will be, but we'll see. Ooh, Jameis Winston. I've seen him do pretty well in Sim before. Do we want to keep going with Trey Lance? There's also Sam Darnold, but I'm, I'm not as interested in Sam Darnold. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. What round was Paris Campbell taken? I think he was a second round pick, actually. Yeah, end of the second. Not that we really need need another receiver over other things, but still, I had to check. Ooh, Irv Smith. Sure. I don't know why I didn't already have him on the team. Charles Harris. I mean, he had one good year in real life, but we kind of need pass rush, so we might go for him. Maybe. Javon Kinlaw. Sure. I mean, he was better in real life this year, but he's only a 72 here. Kenneth Murray. Again, better in real life this year, but I mean, not that we really need linebacker, but we might as well sign someone if we can. Ah, yes. My favorite player. Star star, 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 star. Best linebacker in the league on God. What round was Christian Fulton taken in? Second. Damn, okay. Okay, well, I don't think I'm gonna show every player I go for every year. I don't know why I felt like doing that, but let's see if we can get these four players. Froze my game. I thought nobody signed. We get Kenneth Murray, Charles Harris, and Irv Smith. Javon Kinlaw doesn't want to sign yet, but I don't know how much we... Oh, okay, he does sign. Cool. We'll obviously put Charles Harris at outside linebacker, unless I want to change this to a three. I don't think we have enough linebackers. We only have like four on the roster. We'll keep it a three, four for now. I feel like four threes play better in this game though. But now let's get to the draft and we'll see what we can do there. Is the little NFL draft thing always there? Have I just never noticed that? What is that? Like above the Jets? Is this just a certified EA moment? Let me, let me back out real quick. Okay, there we go. It's gone. <laughs> but of course, like I said, no first round picks to simulate what happened with these teams, which is, you know, not getting first round talent. Ooh, there are some QBs left. I mean, not very good ones, but second to third round talent. There's Marquez Cole. He looks pretty good. I mean, if I didn't know he was a second, third round talent, other than the play action and only having two A passing ratings, or I guess three if you count break sack. Like, other than that, I would think he is worth a first round pick, honestly. I mean, is quarterback our biggest need? I don't know, but we might take one of them later. I say later, I mean like three picks later, but you know what I mean. I thought that said this dude was 285 
five pounds at receiver. No combine and no pro day. Interesting. Must have been hurt. Ooh, this dude's interesting. I wish he was scouted, but Chris Mitchell, elite strength. He's not very, you know, fast, but from what I can see, his ratings look decent. We do pretty desperately need pass rush too. Is he actually good though, is, is the question. Usually it is a big mistake to go with a pass rusher or a D lineman that's projected to go at the end of the first because they are always terrible, but I don't know. Oh, damn. Brendan Buckner. Look at those ratings. <laughs> a, 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 A. I mean, I don't know if the awareness is an A, but it could be. He doesn't have the best finesse, but even then it's not bad. Tackle was kind of an issue for us. I mean, I'm always disappointed by tackles overalls when I take them, but he looks good. Hidden dev, 90 strength. Cool. Not the most exciting first pick of the rebuild, but a good one, I think. Oh, and there goes Marquez Cole, of course. Bruh. <laughs> Both of those quarterbacks went within those three picks or two picks. They went back to back. This game hates me. Are we about to go with another lineman? No, that's so boring. I need to do something else. Well, that means Chris Mitchell's still available. So I guess we'll take a chance on him. He at least has an elite trait and everything that is scouted like a pursuit, a hit power. That's great. I mean, C catching, who cares? D zone coverage, who cares? Might have normal dev, but yeah, he probably will. But let's take him normal dev. That's tough, but could be a good overall. We'll see. And I'll take these last two picks here, or I'll show these last two. I'll probably take a few more. Ooh, George Avril or Avril. He looks pretty decent. It's hard to tell because I barely have him scouted, but he looks good from what I can see. Ah, yes. Just what I want in a defensive back. Four, six, nine speed. I mean, nice at least, but I mean, other than that, he actually looks good, but I, I think that holds him back from being actually good. Yeah, sure. Let's go with George Avril. He has A zone coverage, good speed, elite acceleration, elite strength. Not the best play rec, but I feel like corners never have good play rec in the drafts. Let's take him. Hidden dev, 92 speed, 94 excel. We're definitely not picking busts, which, you know, I don't know how else to do the drafts for this rebuild. I feel like no first round picks is pretty. And last pick I'm going to show, let's go with Mitchell Backus out of Miami. Very good pass blocker. Not the best run blocker, but I've seen worse for pass protector type. And he has great speed, which, you know, I don't know how much that matters but it should help his overall elite agility. I don't know if he's great, but we need a center, so let's take him. Hidden dev, 83 strength, 74 speed for alignment is great. Feels like too good of a draft for the bust rebuild, but what can I say? I'm just the greatest drafter of all time. Incoming all 70 overall picks, and I'm just disappointed. Can't wait. Uh, definitely not 70 overall picks. Uh, why can't I have a draft like this when I actually want to draft well? Brendan Buckner is a 70 79 overall. Probably the best tackle I've ever taken outside of the first round. He looks amazing. Chris Mitchell isn't even that bad. He's a 74, which is about what I thought he would be. George Averill is a 78 with hidden dev. Okay, these the this is gonna help the other busts develop. So this could actually be a good that we had a pretty decent draft. Mitchell Backus, 76 overall. He's way better than I thought he would be. I thought he would be like a 71 or two. 84 pass block as a rookie. Damn. I took Willie Albert. He's not great, but he has 99 speed, 82 deep route. So I'm surprised he's not at least decent. And I think the last pick I took was Trey Street. The CPU took a 72 overall receiver with hidden dev. Even the CPU picked well in this one, of course. And a seven, oh God, did it get one of these X Factor tight ends? This is the rare time where I'm gonna cheat and reveal the dev trade early. Okay, no, it's just star. That's what I get for revealing it. I don't know. But anyways, a uh, pretty good draft and let's get into year two. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. It is, it's still mostly bust. I feel bad for replacing most of the team after year one, but again, I want to draft. And like I said, I think this will make the other busts do well that did well in year one, because we actually have better players around them now. So that's my excuse. Uh, That's all I got. I just wanted to draft, okay? It's boring when I do a rebuild and I don't draft. The defense is still almost entirely original players though. Just Mitchell and Averill are new. Also, Jerry Tillery got star dead. I wish Simmons got a dev trait, but Devin Bush got superstar. I can't remember if I showed that. I wish Nikhil Harry got star dev and Leonard Fournette, but it is what it is. We're up to a 75 now, and we'll get to the midseason point, and hopefully we aren't worse than last year. We we will see. But at the midseason point, we are unfortunately only one and five. It looks like we once again have a good pass D, but that's about it. Let's see if there's anyone we can bench and maybe make this team play better. Should we give another chance to to Zach Wilson. I mean, I gave him a chance in the last one of these I did, and he didn't do great, but I don't know. Ooh, 
Ooh, Mitchell Backus is kind of bad at center. I mean, do we give it back to Billy Price for now? Uh, probably not. Oh, and we have four total sacks on the season. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, <laughs> who was the player that got four sacks last year? Can't remember. Was it McKinley? It was. I mean, four sacks isn't great, but that's a lot better than one. So I might give him the starting job back. And we have one interception. Okay. I know our pass D is good, but ooh. Okay, we'll address that at the end of the year. I'm not going to change the playbooks yet because we definitely don't have a good team. But the way that we're not a good team is kind of weird. We have some players to resign though. I'm going to worry about all these. I obviously won't show them, but or at least all of them. Nobody's interested, which is tough, but Kadarius Tony, our best receiver, five years, 52 mil, and he doesn't take it. Devin Bush, four years, 15 mil. He resigns. Isaiah Simmons, five years, 32 mil. That's really cheap. He doesn't take it. Jerry Tillery, four years, 28 mil. He resigns. And I guess we'll resign Mike Hughes because he's interested. But other than that, I don't know how many of these players we even really need. I'll keep them around actually because, you know, I don't want to have to rebuild a whole new team. Different busts. But I mean, it's not the world, not the end of the world if we lose some of the rest of these guys. But I'll do that. And let's get to the end of year number two and we'll see how we finish. All right. Well, year two is usually a down year in simulation. So I'm not too worried here. However, uh, three and 14 isn't isn't great. Also, again, I don't know how we have the fourth best pass D, but we have the worst team in terms of points per game allowed. What do the like yardage rankings look like? So yeah, we're fourth for pass D, but what about like overall? Probably pretty high. Uh, well, no. Oh, I see. If you can have the fourth best pass defense and <laughs> still be almost bottom five overall in terms of total yardage allowed, that run D must be terrible. And it is. At least we weren't last for points allowed per game somehow. Not that I expect this team to do well, but I've seen teams do a lot better with like almost worse. Why can't this game do for me what it does for those teams? 12 total sacks on the year doesn't help. I think if anything, we're going to change the offensive playbook because at least we weren't last in terms of defense. We were t last in terms of offense. Uh, All three of the linemen I took had superstar dev. Okay. Again, why can't that happen in a regular rebuild? Oh God, what did I start? People are asking me for PS5s now. <laughs> oh no. Okay, shout out to Sergeant M1C for suggesting good play, uh, good playbooks. We will try the Cowboys offensive playbook. I feel like I've used it before and it didn't go well, but we will try that. And for defense, I still don't know what a good 3-4 defensive playbook is, but at least we weren't last in the league for points per game allowed, so we won't switch that yet. But let's get into another offseason and this next season, we could start looking like a good team. Actually, I'm stupid. I forgot to show the stats. So Trey Lance was bad. I think we're going to give up on him, unfortunately. Leonard Fournette did hit 1,000 yards, but only 3.7 yards per attempt. That's not great. Only four touchdowns. Kadarius Toney had 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. He was about our only receiver, though. Ah, yes. Our highest overall O-lineman was our worst performing. That makes sense. And Isaiah Simmons led the team in tackles with 144. Hopefully, he can get superstar dev now. 116 for Bush. TFL's 16 for Mitchell as a rookie, 14 for Tillery, 13 for Kinlaw, and sacks. We had three for Kinlaw, two for Mitchell, Tillery, and Bush, and yeah. And interceptions, two for Simmons, and then one for Devin Bush. Still yet to have an interception from a secondary member, might I add. So maybe we do need a new defensive playbook, because this one isn't great. But MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes, big shocker there. Offensive player of the year goes to Isaiah Pacheco, again. TJ Watt wins defensive player of the year. Offensive rookie of the year goes to John Weldon for the Chargers. Dominic Reed at number five and defensive rookie of the year goes to Brandon Theory. However you say that last name. For the Ravens, Chris Mitchell at three. So once again, no award wins, but at least we had players up there, I guess. Wow, big shocker there. It's a Chiefs Cowboys Super Bowl. I don't remember how many times that happened in the last rebuild, but a couple rebuilds ago, it happened like three times in a row. The Chiefs win this one 31 to 28. Here's the thing. I just hit my mic stand, which by the way, I got a new mic arm. I, I'm kind of too tall for it because I also got a standing desk recently. So I have to like hunch over and it kind of hurts my neck. I'm 6'3", so it, it kind of hurts. Let's go flex in my height. Uh, <laughs> but no, I got a few comments in the last rebuild about me complaining too much. A, I'm I'm mostly messing around. I don't actually get upset from the game. Like I've accepted that it's bad at this point. I do wish there was a better football game, like genuinely, but I don't actually get angry from the game. And B, can you blame me? I don't think it's a surprise that this game sucks. Anyways, let's see who we have to resign. Oh yeah, we still have to 
to re-sign Kadarius Tony. Oh no. Ah, that's tough. How much is a franchise tag for a receiver? Probably like 32 mil or something. 20 cent. I don't know if I want to pay Kadarius Tony that much, but if we have a lot of leftover money, I will. Isaiah Simmons did get superstar dev finally. I think he got X Factor in the last one of these I did, but he does re-sign. Okay, cool. Trey Lance. Honestly, we might go for new two new QBs this year. I think I'm done with Trey Lance. We'll try Zach Wilson maybe for a year, but I'm kind of thinking about Jameis Winston, honestly. Okay, we bring Zach Wilson back. We will see what we do. Cleveland Furl's been terrible. We have a lot of edges. Nikhil Harry, again, we'll see who's available. I wish these players were interested so it wasn't hard to bring them back, but it is what it is. Jonathan Abram resigns. One of the worst players I've ever seen on the Seahawks when he was with them for like two games. Juwan James I'll resign. He's actually been kind of decent. He resigns. He's mostly a case of, you know, he was good when he played, just was injured a ton. Taven Bryan, I guess I'll resign. <laughs> okay, I guess not. Well, let's get into free agency and let's see. I'll probably resign some of these guys, but we'll see if there are any upgrades we can make that I can call busts, which I guess me signing a player in free agency does, doesn't necessarily mean they are a bust, just they haven't worked out here. We'll say that. Damn, Jameis Winston might have got signed to like a longer term deal. That sucks. Okay, well, this is the group of players we are going to go for in free agency. It's definitely a bigger one than last year. We're going to try to bring Kadarius Tony back. We're going to go for Rashawn Evans, Caleb Farley, Derek Barnett, and we're actually going to maybe bend the rules here a little bit. Chase Claypool wasn't a first round pick, but the whole point of this rebuild is kind of like a career resurgence. And I want to try to do that with Chase Claypool. So we'll see what we can do there, assuming we get him, which we should. And I mean, he was a high pick. He was like a second round pick. So close enough. But Nikhil Harry, Anton Harrison is definitely questionable, but he definitely hasn't worked out here. I know he should be, well, I guess he shouldn't be on the Jags right now because we are on the, we are the Jags, but like he should be under contract right now, but we'll just, we'll bring him back. How about that? Taven Bryan, OJ Howard, and Shaq Lawson are the last three, which Shaq Lawson was decent for like a couple years, but I don't know. Let's sign these players. It wants to load. And we actually don't get as many as I thought. That showed none. We don't get as many as I thought we would right off the bat. We do get Tony. We get Claypool, Barnett, Harrison, and Taven Bryan, but we still didn't get any of these players. So let's see if they want to sign now. I don't know if we're going to get Rashawn Evans. Okay, we don't, but it looks like we get the rest of them. Caleb Farley might go to the Cardinals. He still doesn't sign with the team at all. He would be a pretty big addition though. I liked him a lot as a prospect, just injuries and then really unlucky, unfortunate personal stuff has kind of held him back, which definitely sucks. So hopefully he signs with us and we can save his career. We'll see. Still hasn't signed. Do you want to sign now? Okay, he finally does. So now the team should be looking better. I And let's get to the draft. But here in the draft, let's see what we want to do. There were unfortunately, well, I guess not a whole ton of first round QBs or first round talent QBs. I guess there were four though, including one top five guy, maybe like Sam Davis. I don't know. He's supposed to go mid-ish first. I'm sure either Kurt Springs or Quentin Redding will fall to us, but I don't know if I want them. They're third to fourth round talents. They are strong arms, so maybe a dev trait. We'll see. But let's get to our first pit. Eventually, I'm accidentally going to press advance to next round. I guess that's fine here. And like accidentally sim, you know, past a pick. I don't think I've ever done that before, luckily. Ooh, okay. Both first to second round QBs are still available. Sam Davis, elite throw power, elite strength, pretty good ratings, but not the best throw on the run or play action. And then Julian Woodard, elite throw power, elite strength, not the best throw accuracy on the run, but the rest looks good. What are the traits? Literally all of Woodard's are positive. Sam Davis apparently gets happy feet and feels non-existent pressure and slow elongated throwing motion. So I think we're going to go with Woodard. Hopefully he has a dev trait. That's the thing. So let's take him. Uh, <laughs> of course not. You know what? Call me crazy. I feel like for quarterbacks, it's better to go with one that has worse traits, which is stupid as fuck. But I feel like there's a better chance of them having a dev trait, at least past the first round or maybe in like the very back end of the first round. But let's see what we want to do with our second second round pit. We don't really have a good safety, and I don't think we're gonna find one here. Actually, Justin Mann looks decent, but I don't love the play rack. He might be decent, actually. I don't know. It's hard to say. Amari Edwards looks good, other than the speed. Ooh, Ernest Fitzgerald. <laughs> looks pretty good. Great speed, good strength, good change of direction, good acceleration, good jumping, good ratings, other than zone coverage. I wish he had better zone. Should we take a chance? We'll take a chance. Ernest Fitz Fitzgerald. I wish I could speak. Welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, 90 two speed sounds good bald as hell though hmm i don't know where they come up with these names lacambric has there ever been anyone named lacambric let me
me let me search that. There is Lacambric Hannah who stole a bus and killed some people, so that's cool. Uh, it sounds like a great pick. Let's go with Lacambric <laughs> Lacambric Grant. Did I even show him? I don't know. He looks good. Elite strength, solid speed, which you know is pretty good for someone who's six five three oh seven. Sure. Hidden Dev ninety two strength, seventy seven speed. Other than stealing buses and killing people, he might be pretty good. Ooh. Kirk Green is interesting. He has okay speed. He has great strength. His ratings look great, but the awareness is kind of tough. I'm really starting to like drafting physical receivers. Have physical receivers always been good in Madden 24, like in this year's game? Because I feel like Madden updates like how the draft classes work, which is interesting. I, I don't even know if that's true, but I don't remember physical receivers being all that good at the beginning of the year. I don't know, but we'll go with Kurt Green. I don't think he's great, but he looks good. Normal dev, that's tough. All right, I'll make a few more picks and we'll see what kind of draft we had. Okay, definitely not as good of a draft as last year. Julian Woodard, you know, would have been good if he had a dev trait. I think, here's the thing, traits matter so much that I think he's gonna do better than, ooh. Well, I hope he's gonna do better than the other quarterback, but Woodard has aggressive decision maker, which I didn't see, which can be a good thing. I mean, you know, that's kind of what some of the best quarterbacks in the league are, like Patrick Mahomes, like Josh Allen. That's why both of them, you know, have a lot of interceptions is because they try to make such crazy throws and those work out a lot of the time. Julian Woodard also has undisciplined penalty tendency, which kind of sucks. I don't know how you really do that as a quarterback. That doesn't really make sense, but whatever. Ernest Fitzgerald is only a 74, which is tough, but it is what it is. I thought he would be better. He doesn't look bad, but eh. I thought Lacambric Grant would be much better than this. Oh, <laughs> 66 power moves and 60 finesse moves. No, that'll do it. He had what, an A to C and a B to D for one of them? Apparently that was a C and a D. And I don't know if I showed me picking TJ Windsor. He has 67 man and 65 press. Yeah, that'll do it. But he looked a lot better on paper. Okay, this was this was a terrible draft compared to last year. I want to see what the other QB looks like though. Let me guess. Hidden Dev. Yep. 75 overall. Probably X Factor. Okay, just star. That's good. I think the guy we got is better. But let's get into year three and we will see how the teams look it. Ah, yes. Nothing like running an offense through Kadarius Tony in Chase Claypool. This is going to be great. But here we are heading into year three. Hopefully we can do better this year. I, I have no idea. I mean, you know, the point of this rebuild isn't necessarily to win games. It is to, I guess, save the careers of these players. And I would say so far, Kadarius Tony, we've definitely made pretty good. Leonard Fournette's regressing at this point, so that's kind of tough, but at least we're giving him a good career towards the end of it. He's had a couple thousand yard years now. Devin Bush and Isaiah Simmons have both been really good. Uh, our D-line, I don't know, but at least Jerry Tillery's gotten star dev, so that's fun. But yeah, we've saved a few players' careers at, at this point, I guess, arguably. Unfortunately, though, we are done with the bust quarterbacks. I would have started Jameis Winston if he was available, but we started Zach Wilson in the last one, so I don't want to be repetitive with that, at least. So we'll see how Woodard does as a rookie at QB. But let's get to the midseason point of year three, and hopefully we have a better record than last year. I guess you never know. Will we ever escape one and six at the midseason? I don't know, because we are once again one and six. Um, that's tough. It looks like our offense is better, so I guess the Cowboys playbook has worked so far. We have a good pass game. We have the worst run game in the league, but we have a good pass game, at least. The the defense is, I guess, better, but still terrible. I guess it's not like it should be good. I mean, it's, it's a 77 overall team. I just know there are playbooks out there that make you better than you should be. I guess we'll try Rashad Penny for the rest of the year. I think Leonard Fournette might be too far gone in terms of overall. Actually, let me see. What's the problem this year? Woodard isn't doing great so far, but I've seen worse. Okay, yeah, Leonard Fournette's doing pretty terrible. <laughs> Kadarius Tony already has 560 yards. All right. Just looks like more of the same. We have four... <laughs> Four total sacks on the season through seven games. We have had three games so far, at least, where we didn't get a sack. Not one. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll try a new defensive playbook. I know, I know our defense should be bad, but that's a little ridiculous. Hmm. I've used the Cardinals before. I can't remember if it was good or not. I seriously don't remember. I mean, I don't know how much worse it can get. We'll see what that does, I guess. We have a breakout linebacker, though. I wonder, Chris Mitchell. I kind of wish it was a real player, but that's fun. I don't don't think he's gonna hit that, but if he did, that would be kind of huge. Okay, well, we lose, and we allow 42 points on defense, so maybe <laughs> maybe the Cardinals playbook isn't the book, or isn't the play. I almost had it. I just said the wrong half of playbook. I said book instead of play. I'm I'm an interesting critter, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, and shocker, he didn't get the breakout. I Let's get to the end of the year. Okay, well, 
we are once again <laughs> 4 and 13. Why? What's wrong? Okay, Julian Woodard wasn't great. I mean, this is just the stat line we've had pretty much every year. 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, 21 picks. I mean, he's a little better than Trey Lance did last year, but eh. Rashad Penny, 3.4 yards per carry. Elite stat line there. We had two 1,000 yard receivers though, Kadarius Tony and Dominic Reed. I kind of wish that was Chase Claypool, but Chase Claypool also almost had 1,000 yards, 958, seven touchdowns. He had the most touchdown receptions on the team. I like this playbook for sure. Oh, Anton Harrison was awful. That's cool. And then Devin Bush led the team in tackles with 127, 16 tackles for loss for Jerry Tillery led the team, 10 for Turner, and then sacks, six and a half for Chris Mitchell, three for Tillery, McKinley, and Simmons. It actually looks like this defensive playbook might have been better. And then George Averill led the team with four picks, two for Simmons and Farley, one for Bush. So <laughs> not great, but maybe better. I don't know. MVP. Oh, oh, okay. Patrick Mahomes wins it. Marquez Cole at number two. That's fun. I don't know if he would, uh, you know, have the same success on our team, but I guess we'll never know. That's cool. Offensive player of the year goes to Isaiah Pacheco for the third year in a row. This game isn't repetitive at all. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt back to back seasons. This game isn't repetitive at all. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Shelton Cates for the Titans. Woodard at number three. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Michael for, for the Chiefs. Ernest Fitzgerald at number five. Cool. Yeah, I ain't reading that name. I've tried to read Fadio Denebo's name one too many times. But let's get into the offseason. I also love that we got beat 35 to nothing by the Steelers. That's cool. Let's get into the offseason. I wonder what the Super Bowl is going to be. Nah, now it's going to be something different now that I predicted it. Of course it is. The Lions beat the Raiders 17 to 16. That's an interesting Super Bowl. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Jacoby? Who put an L in Jacoby? Jacoby. There's some stupid ass names here. In this rebuild in specific, Jacoby. I hate that. That's weird. But for the rest of the re-signings, eh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who we're going to have at running back, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's get into free agency. I re-signed, I think, Leonard Fournette at the midseason, but he isn't good anymore either, so I don't know. So far, I will say, Trey Lance at least played decent. I mean, that would be a decent season for real life, so I would say we kind of set his career on the right path. I don't know if he's a, I don't know if he's a starter right now or anything, but we've definitely saved Kadarius Tony. He's been great. Chase Claypool was good this last year. Isaiah Wynn has been really good for us, even though he hasn't developed. Leonard Fournette was good before he started regressing. And then, yeah, the linebackers, Devin Bush and Isaiah Simmons have been great. Ooh, Averill got superstar dev. That's fun. Abram got star dev. Cool. I don't know if there are going to be too many free agents we can sign anymore that we can consider busts. Jameis Winston is available. I don't know why I want him so bad. I, I've seen him do well in this game before, but he probably had an actual good team around him. So I don't know. I'll still sign him though. We might as well. We have the money. I don't know what to do at running back. Running back is so important in simulation. It's not very important in real life. I mean, it's important, but you can definitely get by without a great running back in real life. You cannot do that here. So I don't, I don't know what we're going to do there. But here are the players we are going to go for heading into what is possibly the final year of the rebuild. Because we're going to get to the point where we're just going to end up replacing all the busts and there's going to be no real point anymore. But hopefully we can have decent success sooner rather than later. I don't know. But we're going to go for Kyrie Elam, Trevor Penning, Rashad Penny. We'll try to bring him back. Jameis Winston, Evan Neal, and Leonard Floyd. Definitely debatable if Leonard Floyd was a bust. I mean, he's been decent the last couple of years, but before he got to play next to Aaron Donald, who famously makes, you know, all the other players around him look 20 times better. You know, Leonard Floyd definitely looked like a bust before then. Although this last year for the Bills, he was decent. Whatever, <laughs> we'll count it because I think he's pretty good in this game. So let's see if we can sign these players. Hopefully all of them sign, no questions asked. I know that's not going to happen, but we get Kyrie Elam, Trevor Penning, Evan Neal, and Leonard Floyd. We still have the lead for Rashad Penny and Jameis Winston. Neither of them sign. How about now? Okay. I mean, honestly, if we don't get either of them, it's not the end of the world. So let's get to the draft. All right. Well, in the draft, I, you know, maybe this is a big mistake, but I gave the Titans the number two pick. I traded the number two pick for their entire draft other than their first pick. So either this is going to go really well or really poorly, but it probably won't matter either way because I don't know if we'll be competitive, but we will sure try. How about that? There's a, why are all the quarterbacks still available? <laughs> Should I take a chance on one of them just because? I mean, ooh, I don't know about this guy. See awareness. Uh, 
uh, I don't know. I kind of like Cole Mills. Great throw power, great strength, elite acceleration, potentially A awareness. I guess I don't know if it is A awareness though. It could be, but I don't know. Okay, yeah, I think I see why all these guys uh, haven't been picked yet. I guess we don't really need quarterback anymore, but I don't know what we do need at this point. We just, we kind of need better players that I don't know if we're gonna get from the draft. Travis Curtis looks good. I don't know the last time I've taken a elusive back running back though, especially early. I don't know the last time I've taken a running back early at all. I just usually sign them because the drafted ones don't play well at all. Ooh, Patrick Hopkins, this receiver. Not very fast, but elite acceleration, great agility and change of direction. Potentially A awareness and A catching, but for sure A or B medium route, A spec catch. That's not bad for a playmaker receiver. Usually playmaker receivers have terrible receiving ability and they're still decent. Caleb Stevens just straight up skipped the combine or he got hurt after his pro day. I don't know. Something happened. Ooh, whoa. What, what did I just do? How did I go to left tackle? I didn't hit trigger. Um, Jeff White. Uh, <laughs> not very fast, but not slow, I guess. Not the best strength, but elite change direction, elite jumping, elite agility. And look at those ratings. Can't wait for him to be disappointing. Let's take him. Nor <laughs> okay. Should I go with the running back? I mean, I don't know what else to do here. Is the speed... Nope, he's gone. This speed rusher is still here, but he's a second to third round talent. I don't know if I want that, but maybe I do because we don't really have any pass rushers that get more than two sacks a year. So we might need to take that guy. There's also Junior Medlin. He's not very strong, but hmm. Eh, let's go with Chuck McGowan. He's not good. He's not a great overall, but we're desperate for a speed rusher. So let's take him. Normal dev, of course. My drafts are getting worse and worse. That's what I get for saying I'm the greatest drafter of all time or whatever I said. Uh, <laughs> running back, please still be available. He is. He's not going to be good, but he could be good. So let's take him. Okay, finally, we get a hit in dev. Only 87 speed, but 92 excel, 79 strength is interesting. He could be really good. We'll see. But I'll make a few more picks and we'll get a look at the team heading into probably the the final year of the rebuild. Okay, you know what? This was better than I expected. Jeff White, I wish he had a dev trait, but we'll probably start him. I mean, Irv Smith has been decent, but like, I don't know. I want to do well, and Jeff White can develop throughout the year, so we'll see. Again, I don't know how much overall matters, but I don't know. Chuck McGowan is better than I expected, so I guess second to third round talent is a 74 overall. That's not bad. Travis Curtis was a 76, which is about what I expected, and he will start for us. It's just, will he play well don't know if he was a little faster he i think he would be really good i mean he has 89 juke move 86 trucking 91 agility 82 stiff arm 79 strength it's just only 87 speed isn't isn't great and then i took i think chance parks was my last pick no dev trade of course but a 73 overall he had like a power moves it's only 76 whatever let's get into year four but here's a look at the team heading into probably the final year of this rebuild i mean this is kind of a fun team it's a little all over the place. It's definitely an interesting mix of, I guess we mostly weeded out the busts because, you know, believe it or not, they're busts and most of them, most of them, I guess, wouldn't work out given another opportunity, but the receivers have been pretty good. I wish Nikhil Harry developed more because he was good year one. Like he could have been a legit option for us if he, you know, actually developed like he should have for playing well. I don't know, man. I'm really not a fan of how the development works in this game. Like a player can develop pretty much the same from playing well as they do from playing poorly. Is that a good way to phrase that? Like, I don't know. Just getting on the field, they develop as much as someone who actually did well, which is stupid. I don't like it, but whatever. Y'all know there are like a million things I don't like about this game. This defense is still a lot of busts in real life. Caleb Farley, Farley Kair Elam, Peyton Turner, Jerry Tillery, Devin Bush and Isaiah Simmons, Jonathan Abram. Our defense feels better than our offense, but I guess our offense is a higher overall. I guess we just have the linemen that hold our offensive overall up, but they don't really play well, so I don't know. Anyways, let's just get straight to the end of year four, and we'll see how we do. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number four, and if you haven't already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. I know it sounds stupid, but if there's anything I could ever ask you to do, it is just like the video. It takes you like two seconds. It helps out the channel. I would appreciate it. I don't mean to sound annoying, but it probably does, but also I don't care. Be sure to like the video. Uh, <laughs> 
And yeah, subscribe for more, and let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below. Because if I use your suggestion, I'll give you a shout out if you care about that. Y'all know the deal. But actually, before I reveal how he did, something interesting is Travis Curtis has X Factor. That's interesting. I mean, he's gonna become a good overall player. He has 31 injury, apparently. So that's, that's kind of tough. Is there anyone, I think I asked this before, is there anyone in the actual game that has injury that bad? I mean, even players like Jamal Adams or something only has like 70 injury. Like, it's not that bad. How do you get 30 injury? Like, have you never played in your career? Are you just literally always hurt? I don't know. But anyways, in year number four, we, of course, did not make the playoffs going 5-12. and 12. Now, again, we had a good run D, or a good pass D, and a good pass game on offense, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Now, we did have our best year, but at this point, if we keep going, it's just not going to be any actual busts on the team anymore, unfortunately. Although, we pretty well got the results I wanted. So Julian Woodard was actually better this year. 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, 16 picks. Not like a phenomenal year, kind of a lot of picks, but a good year. Curtis was uh, okay as a rookie, 900 yards, but only 3.7 yards per carry, 9 touchdowns. Kadarius Toney and Chase Claypool, 1,364 yards on 107 catches for Kadarius Toney. Only 8 touchdowns, but that's more of a product of the offense being bad than his fault. And Chase Claypool, only 4 yards away from 1,000 yards. Now, is he a bust? Not necessarily, but for what he should have been in the league, I would say he is a bust so far. So I don't know. Five touchdowns. Jeff White was pretty good as a rookie. The blocking was really good. I'm surprised. Usually when you have a bad season, the blocking is just absolutely terrible. But this year, the line was good. Isaiah Simmons, 124 tackles led the team. 100, 100 tackles for Averill. That's concerning at corner. I wonder how many times he got beat. I don't know. But Chris Mitchell led the team in TFLs with 12, 11 for Tillery and Kinlaw. I did not mean to click him. I'm stupid. And sacks were once again the major problem on the team. Chris Mitchell with three led the team as an 80 overall. That's realistic. Thanks, EA. I love this game. Two and a half for McGowan or McGowan and Kinlaw. And that's, that's about it. And those are terrible numbers. And then interceptions, also hardly any. Two for Fitzgerald. He was pretty good. Not a great amount of pass deflections, but one for Simmons, Abram, and Farley. But we'll go super quick through the yearly awards. Finally, not Mahomes. It's Jalen Hurts who wins MVP. Of course, Marquez Cole haunting us. Offensive player of the year goes to division rival Jonathan Taylor, of course. Defensive player of the year, ooh, that's cursed. It goes to Micah Parsons on the Patriots. That would be a good scheme. Well, I guess they're not gonna, are they gonna run a Belichick style offense or defense? I guess Gerard Mayo probably would because that's what he's been doing. Interesting. Because I mean, Parsons has that off ball experience, obviously. So that's really interesting. Oh God, him and Matt Judon. Matt Judon's a touch overrated, but he's still good. That would be a scary duo. Vince Hooks for the Ravens wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, Curtis at three and White at four. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jeremiah Campbell for the Bengals, Chuck McGowan at number three, and that's it. You know what? I want to do something. Let's check out our career stat for these players. I'll ignore, like, the ones we drafted, but how about the busts? Uh, I wish we still had Leonard Fournette. I wonder if he's on a team. No, let me sign him. Unless he retired or something. And obviously, these players' careers aren't over, so they should continue to add more stats and continue to grow. But Leonard Fournette, 7,000 yards, 50 touchdowns. That's pretty good. Kadarius Toney, almost 5,000 yards in five seasons so far and 30 touchdowns. That's pretty good. Chase Claypool, 4,000 yards, 24 touchdowns. Nikhil Harry at least finishes with 2,000 yards and 19 touchdowns. Better than he's doing in real life. Devin Bush and Isaiah Simmons both have 731 tackles each. That's kind of crazy. TFL's Jerry Tillery has 69. Nice. 51 for McKinley, 47 for Barnett, 40 for Simmons, and sacks, nothing crazy, but 26 for McKinley's all right, 21 for Barnett. I mean, if actually given an opportunity in real life, I think these players would finish with more. And interceptions, nothing crazy, but 11 for Isaiah Simmons, 5 for Carl Joseph, 4 for Bush, Abram, and Averill. So I would definitely say we at least saved some careers, and at the very least prolonged a few of them. So this was a fun rebuild, obviously no success, not like we have the best roster in the world, but it was fun either way. It's interesting to see Kadarius Tony become what I kind of thought he could coming out of Florida. But anyways, be sure to watch the other one of this. If you haven't already, it might even show up in the end screen of this. But again, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for more, like if you haven't already. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.